a few days ago, at the request of some people, I had given the Buddha of Boundless Light Amitaya's initiation. The initiation was intended as a blessing for people. But I did say that if people want to take this up as a practice, they can, and I'll give a short explanation. And that's what today is about. Some people have requested. I'm going to give a short explanation on the practice of Amitaya's Buddha. And I'm going to do it without a lot of rituals, because it's for common, ordinary people who perhaps don't have the time for long rites and rituals. And also, um, they can just focus on the meditations and the recitation. There are many emanations of Buddha who, if we invoke upon, meditate upon, and we do prayers to, they can eliminate problems such as obstructions to long life, disease. They definitely can help. If we have a long life free of disease with a sound, clear mind, we can do so much to benefit others and ourselves. When our life is constantly threatened by disease or disasters or shortness of life, it is a tremendous obstacle, to say the least, to our spiritual practice. To be born in a country that you're allowed to practice, to be near a teacher, to have heard about Buddha's teachings, to be able to, in the comfort of your own home, practice to improve your mind, to gain awareness, to gain clarity, to gain wisdom, to gain knowledge, is really, is really, really a rare congregation of different environmental, physical causes all coming into play. Even hearing the Buddha's name and having faith is a rare occasion. So when we have gotten such a perfect human body, perfect meaning it is sound, it is operable. You know, we're not paralyzed or something. It is, we have a sound mind and a slow or fast, it doesn't matter. And we have an operable body is, and we are near a teacher and we have heard the Dharma and we have the opportunity to learn and expand and become better. It is really, really a rare confluence of positive merits and prayers and blessings from previous lives. So, receiving a blessing of Amitayas is wonderful. Amitayas is a Buddha. It is the form of Amitabha Buddha in the form of a Bodhisattva. Amitayas is a fully awakened, enlightened Buddha who has every power, blessings, and benefits of every other Buddha in existence. And to Summarize Amitai as simply as a long life Buddha would be not beneficial to what we want to do. On a higher level, to do any of the Buddha practices and sadhanas, sadhana is the specific meditation and rites that are associated with the Buddha to bring us to a higher and awakened state of mind, to enlightenment. So any Buddha's practice and meditation written and it's in systematic form, we call a sadhana. A sadhana is something that transforms oneself. In Tibetan you call it a da ke. Da is self, ke is to grow or to expand or to increase or to transform. So to transform from an ordinary person to that of an awakened being. So a sadhana is actually a practice of any deity. Tara sadhana, Amitabha sadhana, Vajrakini sadhana, Lama Tsongkhapa sadhana, short or long. The purpose of a sadhana is to bring us to an awakened state. Then each Buddha has a special energy, a special um, power to help us in some ways. It is based upon the vows and promises they made before they became enlightened. Amitayas can grant us great compassion, wisdom, generosity, love, patience, effort, understanding of impermanence, but a side benefit is when you do Amitayas' practice, your diseases heal. Your fear 
heals. Your inner disease is healed. Your mental disease is healed. Your, your scars, your emotional scars heal. Your impatience and your desire and grasping towards things that harm you start to lessen and minimize. The root cause of us taking rebirth, one of the root causes is desire. The desire for food, the desire for fun, the desire for entertainment, the desire for partners, the desire for pleasure, the desire for money, the desire for abundance, the desire for acquisitions. This desire that we have and we're constantly compelled and pushed and, and forced to act it out is the very cause for us to take rebirth endlessly and to suffer those rebirths. So the purified energy of desire within the Buddhas is Amitabha or Amitaya's energy. So hence their body is red in color. The red represents purified desire. So therefore, if we, when we overcome desire for all things outer and inner, and we have come to rest our minds on an isle of liberation, an island of liberation, we can totally see what existence is all about. And existence is about grasping towards things that actually bring us more problems, more sufferings, and we don't know it. So therefore, Amitabha is a wonderful practice to do. Amitayas is a wonderful practice. Amitabha, Amitayas, no difference. is a wonderful practice for us to do to heal scars that are emotional from inside, damages we have experienced from previous lives and this life. It is a very powerful practice to heal sickness and disease. It is a very powerful practice to also create the causes for us to not have very dangerous diseases or when we have diseases to heal. And it's a wonderful practice to practice and to engage in. If we are sick, it will expedite healing. And if we recite the Amitayas mantra and blow it on our medication, the medication will take on more energy, more power to heal our bodies. And Amitabha sits in Kidumba, which means in meditation with the legs crossed, holding a long live vase at his hands, in his hands in his lap. His right hand is inside his left hand, like so. And then the long live vase is being held, facing towards you. And it Pasangishing, it has a wish fulfilling tree, a wish fulfilling stem growing from it or in it, and the water inside is ambrosial. A taste of this water is to heal all causes for taking rebirth and samsara, and it overflows. And he's in the form of a youth, 16 years old, wearing the six ornaments of the body, such as the crown, armlets, bracelets, necklace, anklets, etc. And his top part of his body is bare, showing complete detachment and attachment to form to projections and wrong view. And his hair is half tied up in three knots and half flowing down over his shoulders. And his face is blissful, smiling, peaceful, gentle, and youthful. And his body sits straight. And he looks straight at you with a body like that of a ruby mountain, glowing, not flat, not hard, not stiff, but glowing. So we should visualize Amitabha in that manner. And if we can, we should think that the, the teacher or the Lama that we have taken teachings from is one in nature with Amitabha, is one in nature with the enlightened, purified energy of desire of all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and deities. We should think like that very strongly. And then we should have a um, simple altar set up for Amitabha. Uh, Amitayas, which I will show you at this time. I have a simple shrine set up that we can do in our homes where we wish to do Amitayas' practice. And let me describe to you what is necessary as part of this practice and what is extra. Now, basically, we need an image. It can be a picture or a statue, whatever size you prefer, a poster, a tanka 
a tata of Amitayas. All right, so you can have a tata, which is a small clay image. You can have a statue, how large, up to you, 10 feet, 10 inches, 11 inches, 20 feet, one feet, up to you. You can, you can have a picture. You can have any representation of uh, Amitayas. If it's a statue, it would be very good if you can um, have it filled with the proper mantras and then a Sungjup Puja Dan and a Rabne Puja Dan. Um, if your statue is not hollow, then that's fine. Okay, so you have a statue of Amitayas here, as I have here. And then you can have a statue, you can have an image uh, of your Lama or your teacher. In this case, I put His Holiness Kepja Saramji, which is my root teacher. And then you have a stupa and a Dharma text. Okay, you can have the stupa on this side, Dharma text. I mean, there are, there are different systems how you set it up. I just put it on, it just looks clean and neat. So you have basically the body of a Buddha, the mind of the Buddha, and the speech of the Buddha. And then the body, speech, and mind, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, the three representations of Buddha, Dharma, Buddha's body, speech, and mind, and then also where you obtain the Dharma from, which is from our root teacher, from our teachers, all right? Can you have other images on your altar? Sure you can. Can you have more than one Lama on your altar? Sure you can. But this is the basics. Then for this practice, you need to have one set of sensory offerings. Water to drink, water to wash feet, flour, incense, light, perfume, uh, fruit, and music. And then you need to have one torma or a sacrificial cake or a cake. That can be cookies, it can be fruit, that should be changed every single day, which is shown here. And if you have problems leaving cookies and, and snacks, I mean, it can be biscuits, it can be potato chips, it can be popcorn, candy, whatever you like. And you can eat it afterwards when it's been done. You can give it away as a blessing or eat it yourself. Um, as you can tell from the video, I've ate a lot of tormas and blessings. Anyways, uh, you can have this one here. And if you have a problem with infestation of ants and insects that come the minute you put food there like we do, you can put it in a bottle. All right, or you can elevate it and put water around it like a, a little moat. Anyways, for this practice, this is what you need. This is the basics. A Buddha image of Amitayas, or any image. Stupa, Dharma book, if you like, your Guru's picture, or you can simply visualize your Guru in it, in Amitayas. The sensory offerings and the Torma. So this is what you need. Body, speech, and mind of the Buddha. Torma, or the sacrificial offering, and then the sensory offerings. Everything else you see here is extra. You can put extra flowers, you can put the eight auspicious signs, you can put more, more items if you like. Let me repeat, for this particular Amitayas practice that you do every single day, an image of Amitayas, Torma, T-O-R-M-A, and then sensory offerings. Stupa, Dharma book, any size you like. Of course, if you're not in the room, do not have your candle unattended to. You should blow it out respectfully. You can recite Om Ah Hong, Om Ah Hong, Om Ah Hong, and then go like this and wipe it off. Okay? Um, the offerings can be set in the morning, afternoon, evening, just before you start your practice, or it can be done just when you're about to start your practice. And when do you clean it? Whenever you like. Is there a timing that you should set your offerings? Not really. Tibetans like to make offerings in the morning, but you do it any time you like, okay? Because their morning is your evening if you're in America, and if you're in America, your evening is our morning. So it doesn't really make a difference. Then you can put the eight auspicious signs. Victory banner, uh, which represents overcoming evil. The double fish, which represents um, prosperity. Um, the uh, vase, the excellent vase, which represents long life. The lotus that represents great compassion, spiritual attainments. The um, conch shell, which represents um, fame and the growth of one's spiritual practice. The eternal knot of happiness. Again, a banner representing um, royalty or overcoming Mara, which is royalty, meaning in this case Buddha, overcoming Mara, which is one's inner demons, and the wheel of Dharma.
all right? Learning, obtaining, being near, being reincarnated, being born near Dharma. So when you offer these eight auspicious signs and their meaning to Amitayas, you get back the result of what you have offered, okay? So the basic offerings are there. This is how you should have set up every day because you'll need this for your sadhana. Again, the Guru's picture, the eight auspicious signs and the flowers here are extra. You can put many more flowers. You can put many more rows of sensory offerings. You can just put maybe even rows of water offerings. You can put, you know, um, drinks, whatever you like. You can have bigger tormas, lesser tormas. What, what should you put in tormas? Anything you like except meat and alcohol for Amitai's practice. No meat and no alcohol. Then, this is what you require on your altar. And then for this practice, I am not going to teach you how to do the Vajra, the bell, because I'm going to make it simple, simple for people. But what you do require is an inner offering. You can have a small leak-proof uh, container, such as this. And it contains some tea and drops or a nectar pill. You can get a nectar pill from your Lama, you can get a nectar pill from your Dharma Center, or you can get a nectar pill from somewhere. So what it means is that a Lama or a monk or a Geshe or, or a place where they have the blessed nectar, you take a little and put it in your nectar. All right? When you travel, when you travel, it can be less. And if it dries up, you can put a little bit inside and rejuvenate it. Okay? Uh, you need this for your practice. Um, if for whatever reason you're really like living far, far away from any Dharma center or any lamas, then you just put some black tea in it uh, and that'll be good enough. And if it becomes moldy, change it. All right, if you have a blessing pill in it or blessing nectar from another lama put inside, then what you can do is uh, you can take a little bit of it and put fresh tea and put a few drops in it so it's regenerated. Um, if you're living in Kuala Lumpur, then I'll be happy to give you some of mine to put in your inner offering. You can request one of my private office people. There's five of them. We call them the POs. All right, so you're going to need an inner offering. That's a setup for the altar. Now let's go back to the actual, actual text. The text I will be using, there are many texts of Amitayas' practice, but I'm going to use one from De Qingling Press because it's simple and short and clear, translated by Mr. David Gonzalez. Um, I will provide the website for you on my blog post along with this video that shows you where you can um, buy this offline, online, and then download it for your own usage, okay? So the text we're using here is the Life Nectar of Immortality, Self-Generation Sadhana of Amitayas in the Tradition of Machi, Jube Gyalmo, De Qingling Press. Now I want to stress again, I'm not gonna go heavy into the meditations, I'm not going to go heavy into the practice and visualizations because this is for people who are very busy, who don't have time, or who are very elderly. And I'm going to make it very simple. And also in this practice, I'm not going to show you or teach you how to do the ritual objects, ritual items such as the Vajra and Bell, um, because I just want them to focus on the practice and meditation. So in this session, I'm making it very easy for everyone. So if you're very young, if you're elderly, you're on the go, you're busy, you have too many sadhanas, or whatever, this will be perfect for you. Uh, this practice will help to heal inner, outer pains, expedite healing of disease. Can we do it for other people? Sure we can. We can dedicate it to them, all right? Um, now, can we do it for animals? Perfect, perfect. Even I can recommend that you can put a picture of the person you love or an animal that you love that's alive or dead, person and animal, put on your altar and ask Amitayas to bless them. And then it's a wonderful mantra to recite and we can blow on animals. Um, we can blow on ourselves. We can blow on malas. We can blow on rice to bless environments. We can even bl blow it on rice, dry rice, to throw into water, to throw on the land, to throw into areas to bless the area. All right? Now on this sadhana, page three, we start with taking refuge. Let's make it very simple. Again, I'm not going to be extensive, okay? On your left is your mom. On your right is your dad. Whether they're alive or dead, doesn't matter. 
your enemies or people who will harm you are in the front. If you have no enemies, leave the front empty. Behind you are people who are close, and surrounding you are all sentient beings of the six realms in the form of humans for auspicious reasons. And in front of you is Amitaya's Buddha, surrounded by the retinue of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and deities. That's one visualization. The second visualization you can do is simply yourself and Amitaya's in the front, resplendent, glorious, fully enlightened, and the embodiment of your Guru and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and deities. Up to you. And if you find it difficult to visualize Amitaya's, then you can just visualize or believe he's there, and that's fine. If that's even difficult, just look at the statue of the image you have. That's the purpose of having a shrine, all right? Um, then you take, then if you're here, that's, this is for yourself. If it's for someone else, you can visualize the person in front of Amitaya's prostrate, with their hands uh, folded, or respectfully sitting there, receiving blessings from Amitaya's. You can do that, okay, or an animal. First, you will recite the refuge prayers that it says here. When you get the text, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, with that visualization, you do, I will go for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, for the wealth of all living beings. I shall become Amitayas, okay? So you do, um, I will always go for refuge to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, for the wealth of all living beings. I shall become Amitayas three times. Then you think, you take refuge, which you trust the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And the purpose of you doing this practice is that you will become a Buddha, which is Amitayas in this case, to benefit all sentient beings. So you're taking refuge in generating the superior altruistic mind of enlightenment, bodhicitta. Next is blessing of the environment. As this is a tantric practice, you will be visualizing yourself as a deity. If you are doing this practice, you do not do this visualization. If, you're, if you have not received, I'm sorry, if you have not received the initiation of this practice, then you don't do the visualization, uh, as I'm about to teach. Which is the mantra of emptiness, and then everything becomes emptiness. Your body, the environment, your surrounding, everything dissolves into emptiness. From that emptiness, the emptiness meaning not of nothing, the emptiness of projections, the emptiness of wrong view, the emptiness of wrong, false grasping at existence. From this emptiness arises the letter PAM. You don't have to be Tibetan. PAM is P-A-M. The letter PAM. From the PAM, it instantly becomes a lotus. On a lotus is a red letter, is a, is a letter A, a white letter A. That turns into a moon mandala. Upon that sits your own mind in a red letter HRI. And then together with, with this, you visualize instantly from the Khri, you arise as Amitaya's Buddha. That's right, you visualize yourself as Amitaya's Buddha. In Tantra, you take the result or the fruit onto the path. Meaning, before you become a Buddha, you visualize yourself as a Buddha to actualize your Buddha nature. All right, so I repeat, from the letter Pam, it becomes a lotus. From the Pam on top, a red letter Khri, which is your consciousness. So you don't look from outside at the Khri. Khri is H-R-I-H, -H, or H-R-I, up to you. Saramji said it is okay to visualize it in English letters, or any language you prefer, it's all right. So you visualize a Khri like this, on top of the moon and the lotus, and you're not looking out at it, you're that letter looking around you. I repeat, you are that letter sitting on a moon disk and a lotus looking around you, looking out. So that is you. Then from that, it instantly transforms into Amitaya Spada. And then uh, this completely transforms and I arise as a conqueror Amitaya with immeasurable life and wisdom with a red color body, one face and two hands and a mudra of meditative equipoise in which a vase brimming with nectar of immortality. I sit in the Vajra posture with all the marks and signs of a complete enjoyment body. My body is adorned with precious jewels and various silken garments. And my crown is an Om, and my throat is an Ah, and my heart is a Hom. So you arise as Amitayas, you have a white Om, O-M, here. It says crown, so you visualize it here. Some is here on the forehead. A white Om is here, O-M. A red Ah is at the throat, and a, a blue Hom is at the heart. This represents the body, speech, and mind of all the Buddhas. Then from the Hong at your heart, 
you visualize lights going out into the western direction, inviting the actual Amitayas to you. Then you visualize Amitayas coming to you, and then you dissolve him into you by reciting the mantra Za Hom Bam Ho, Za Hom Bam Ho. Never mind the mudras, just do the mantra Za Hom Bam Ho. Then Za is him coming forth, Hong is he's on top of you. Bam is he dissolved into you. When you recite Ho, he becomes one with you. So you and the actual Amitayas are one. Then you should think that, the, and it says here, the commitment being and the wisdom being become inseparable. Commitment being is yourself, the wisdom being is Amitayas, become inseparable. So that's page, uh, that's the first page. After that, again, from your heart, there's a letter Hong. Light rays radiate out, invoking the empowering deities, empowering deities to the space before me. So the five Dhyani, empowering deities represent the five Buddha families or the five Dhyani Buddhas. Amitabha, Akchobhya, Amogasiddhi, Ratnasambhava, and Vaidochana. These are the five Buddha families coming on top, and they're similar to Amitayas, except Vaidochana is white. Amitabha is red, and uh, Amoga City is green. I mean, uh, Ratna Sambhava is yellow, Akchobhya is blue. So those are the five Buddhas coming forth, holding vases, and they pour nectar from the vases, the same vase as Amitayas is holding, and they recite this mantra while you're reciting. Oma Sawa Tada Kata Api Kikata Samaya Shireye Hong. Then you should think that they initiate you with the nectar, and your whole body is Amitayas fills up, and you're filled with bliss and filled with happiness, and all stains of self-grasping and desire and hatred are eliminated. And then a little bit of the nectar overflows on the crown of your head. This one transforms into another Amitayas adorning your head. So you are Amitayas, then you have a crown, then you have a top knot. Between the crown and the top knot sits another Amitayas, and that is, your, that is your guru. So you should visualize yourself as Amitayas with your guru in the form of Amitayas blessing you. Why? Without the guru, in Tantra there is no enlightenment. Then, the next one is we bless our inner offering. The inner offering, you do not open till you recite this mantra, because there are beings around that can steal the essence, it is said. So you recite the mantra as it says in the text, Om Benza Amrita Kundali Hana Hana Hum Pe Om Subhava Shuddha Sawa Dhamma Subhava Shuddha Ham I repeat, you do not open it and leave it open. Sometimes assistants or people, they just leave it open like that, it's not correct. It should be closed and sealed at all times. Then when the Lama is going to do the practice, he opens it himself. And if your bottle is small, it's like that. But actually, if the opening is big and the cover is big, you never leave it fully exposed and open. It should be slightly covered. But if you cannot do it, it's okay. But usually it should be slightly covered. Never open like that. So it's only during the mantra. I repeat, when you're reciting the mantra on page four here, Oma, Oma Benza Amita Kunali Hana Hana Hompe Oma Subhava Shuddha Sawadama Subhava Shuddha Ham. When you recite Om Benza Amita Kunali Hana Hana Hompe, the obstacles are dispelled. Then you bless and you recite. Everything becomes emptiness. From the sphere of emptiness, from a yam comes a wind, from rum comes a fire, from a ah, a great of three human heads, above this from a ah, a broad and extensive skull cup, inside of the five meats and the five nectars. These are purified, transformed, and increased by the three letters, and becomes great ocean of uncontaminated nectar. Okay? So, I don't know how extensive I can get into that. I think what you do is this. Um, I think I won't go too detailed into the five meats and the nectars. I think for our purposes in this to make it simple, we just visualize the inner offering and we recite the verses and we think it's blessed. There is an extensive meditation for it, which you have the five meats, you have the five nectars, such as horse, dog, human, 
Cal. Etc. And then you have the five nectars, such as urine, blood, bile, uh, semen, etc. But I think it gets too complicated. So what you do is you visualize your inner offering as you see it, and then you visualize Om Ah Hong on top. So let's say this is your inner offering. You have the Om closest to the offering. Ah, next up, it's going up, and Hong on top. Then you visualize Om Ah Hong, lights going out to the 10 directions, inviting the essence and blessings of all the Buddhas dissolve into that. Then the first time you recite Om Ah Hong, actually if you want to do extensively, it's Om Hong. The letter Hong purifies all faults of color, smell, and potentiality. Ah transforms into nectar. Om multiplies, increases it. Om ah hom, om ah hom. But that's going to get quite extensive. So what you do is this. I make it simple for you. You just visualize um, your nectar as it is and believe it is what it says in the text. That's good enough for practitioners for now. And then om ah hom on top. You visualize from om ah hom, lights go out to the 10 directions, comes back and dissolves. And the first time you recite om, it falls in. Then you said second time you recite Om Ah Hong, Ah falls in. The second time you the third time you recite Om Ah Hong, Hong falls in. So the first recitation, Om Ah Hong, Om goes in. The second recitation, Ah goes in. The third recitation of Om Ah Hong, the third one goes in. So it becomes purified, clean, becomes nectar and never ending, and has the power to bless and concentrate. I think that'll be easier for all of us, okay? Then, after it's been blessed, should be on your table, you use your left ring finger and flick it to bless your sensory offerings. Om Benza Amrita Kundali Hana Hana Hom Pe. I mean, you don't have to stick your whole finger and flick until you know you see spots all over the place. Just a very light one. Just a very light. Okay? Om Benza Amrita Kundali Hana Hana Hom Pe. Dispelling obstacles, then you dissolve the offerings by reciting Om Asuba Vashuddha Sawa Dhamma Asuba Vashuddha Ham. Everything becomes emptiness. From the state of emptiness, it says here, from Kam, so the eight letters of Kam, comes a vast and expansive skull cup. The skull cup, why it's not real skull, the skull cup represents impermanence and death to do your practice well. It's a reminder. Inside is eight Hongs. So you have eight Kams. Inside the eight gum, ins uh, you have eight uh, cups. Inside the cups, you have eight gums in each. K A M. Then, sorry, you have eight gums. Gums. From that arises the skull cups. Inside the skull cups, you have eight homes. From the homes arise water for the drinking, water for bathing, water for flowers, water. For, I mean. Water for drinking, water for bathing, flowers, incense, light, perfume, food, and music. So I repeat. Oma benza amnita kundali hana hana hong pe. Then you purify the obstacles and interferes. Oma suba washida sawa dama suba washido ham. Then the eight sensory offerings dissolve. From that arises eight gum, K A M. Gum turns into skull cups. Within the skull cup is eight hongs. The hongs become the eight sensory items that are contained inside. Water for the um, drinking, water for bathing, flowers, incense, light, perfume, food, and music. Then you recite, by nature of emptiness, they have the aspect that individual offering substances they operate, as well as uh, for the enjoyment of the six senses to bestow exalted uncontaminated bliss. The uncontaminated bliss is that of pure Emptiness, the great bliss that arises from direct perce perception of emptiness. If you don't know exactly what that says, just recite it, it's okay. Just recite it. Then you bless each of the eight offerings by inserting within Om Ah Hong. Okay? So the first one is Om Argom Ah Hong. Om Padiam Ah Hong. Om Benza Pube Ah Hong. It's written here Vajra. You can recite Om Vajra or Om Benza up to you. Tibetans recite Vajra as Benza. The actual Sanskrit word is Vajra up to you. 
So I do it the Tibetan way because my teacher gave it to me like that. You bless the eight items by reciting Oma Argom Ahum, Oma Padiam Ahum, Oma Benza Pube Ahum, Benza Dube Ahum, Benza Dipe Ahum, Oma Benza Gende Ahum, Benza Nevende Ahum, Benza Shapta Ahum. If you have ritual items which you don't require, as I said earlier, you can do the mudras. Oma Argom Ahum, Oma Padiam Ahum, Oma Benza Pube Ahum, Oma Benza Dube Ahum, Oma Benza that's up to you, okay? Once you recite that, think the sensory offerings are pure, they're clean, they bestow great bliss, and it's not just what you see in the front, they're as big as oceans, like eight huge oceans of offerings. Eight huge offerings, oceans of water and perfume and light and food and fruits. You can visualize all of that, okay? Then, the blessings are purified. We've Taken refuge, generated the altruistic mind, dissolves our, ourself into emptiness. From emptiness, we arise as Amitayas. Then we bless the inner offering. After blessing the inner offering, we bless the outer offerings. Now we are doing um, outer offering generation. So we recite Oma Apar. Aparimita Ayujana Sabari Wara Agum Patitae Soha, and so on. Now you're doing the offerings to Amitayas. By offering the sensory items to Amitayas, you gain the benefits of these offerings, such as wisdom, always having plentiful needs and food and shelter, and also gaining uh, um, being able to hold ethics and morality, being able to obtain um, wisdom. Great bliss, you get that from offering the sensory items. In short, so what we're doing is this, you recite it, but you make the offerings by saying, Oma Apa Rimita Ayu Jana Sapari Wara Agum Patitai Soha. By reciting that, you offer drinking water to Amitayas. The next one is Oma Apa Rimita Ayu Jana Sapari Wara Padi and Patitai Soha. You're offering water for bathing to Amitayas, which purifies one's obscurations. Then the next one is Um Apa Rimita Ayujana Sapari Wara Pube Patitaiso, offering beautiful flowers to Amitais, which represents um, getting rid of grasping towards so called pleasant objects, okay? Which actually in nature are not pleasant. The next one is Uma aparamita ayujana sapari wara dube patitaye soha. Dube is incense, and this represents being able to hold morality, ethics, one's refuge vows, one's um, bodhisattva vows, and tantric vows. The vows, the roots of our attainments. By offering incense, we create merit to hold our vows very well. Okay? The next one is um aparimita ayujana sapari wara aloke. Patitaye so Aloke is light by offering light or candle. It can be electric also. Um, it represents illumination, wisdom, clarity, understanding. We gain those qualities in the future by offering this to a Buddha Amitayas. The next one is Oma Aparamite Ayujana Sapari Wara Gende Patitaye Soha. Gende Patitaye Soha is perfume. If you have a bottle of perfume, you can leave it there. You don't have to change it every day. You can change it once a month, once every two months, once every three months. Up to you. Okay, uh, or if you don't have perfume, you can simply put there a cup of water to represent perfume. So when you offer perfume, it's offering tactile uh, pleasures to Amitaya Buddha. He doesn't need the pleasure, he doesn't need the offering. It's for us to become detached from tactile attachments. Okay, the next one is Uma aparamite ayujana sabari wara numende patitain saw, represented by the apple in this case, offering food. So you visualize pizza and you know uh, delicious drinks and fruits and nectars and you know whatever you like, you visualize it filling a whole ocean offering to Amitayas. And you visualize all the people in the world who are hungry, who don't have food, who are suffering, may they be free from hunger. And by offering food to Amitayas, which he doesn't need, you generate the merit of always getting your needs fulfilled to do Dharma practice. So whatever you need to do Dharma practice, it will be fulfilled in the future. It creates this kind of karma. The last thing is Oma Aparamite Ayujana Sabari Wara Shapta Patitani Soha. Shapta represents sound. The mudra is like this, like hitting a drum. 
if you don't do it, you don't need to do it. Oma aparami te, oma aparimita, sorry, ayu jana sapari wara shapta patita soha is offering sound, meaning the sound of Dharma, the understanding of Dharma, propitiating Dharma, learning Dharma, spreading Dharma. Okay? Then after you do that, oma aparamita ayu jana sapari wara agum. You do all that up to the last one, then you do your inner offering. When you do your inner offering, you don't have to lift it up. You ch I'm lifting up so you can see. You put your ring finger inside and you flick a little and think that it creates great bliss in Amitaya's mind for you to achieve enlightenment. Oma, aparimita ayujana sapariwara oma ahum. When you say oma hum, you flick it a little. Again, you don't have to dip your home finger in, like, you know, here Amitaya, and then he's like drowning in your uh, uh, nectar. You don't have to do that. So we offer the sensory offerings. Then we offer the inner offering, which I just flicked. And last, we offer praise. And it says right here, Amitayas, principal, principal guide of the world, destroyer of all untimely death without exception, refuge for those suffering and without a protector. To you, Buddha Amitayas, I prostrate. If we have a voucher and bell, we can ring our bell at this time while doing this. If we don't, we simply fold our hands. So the next one is mantra recitation. This part's very important, okay? Inside the vase of Amitayas, the one's crown is a moon mandala upon which a red letter Kri is surrounded by the essence of long mantra. So, remember we have our guru who's on top is Amitayas, and then he's holding a, a lamp, I'm sorry, a vase. Inside the vase is a letter Kri, and is surrounded by Amitayas' short and long mantra. Then, from the Kri, lights emanate and makes offering to all the Buddhas. So what kind of offerings? Let's make it simple. The sensory offerings you offer up to the Buddhas, many sensory offerings. Then, at the same time, the lights from the Kri also go out and touches all sentient beings in the six realms. It blesses them, it purifies their karma, and they arise as Amitayas. So you should think that everybody around you, including people you don't like, are Amitayas Buddhas. And then the lights gather back from the three jewels, and dissolves into the red khri. Okay? Then, from these light rays, from these light rays, again, from the khri, sorry, from the khri, light rays go out again, and it goes out to the Lord of Death, Yama, harmful spirits, And it, the lights come back and fill up the vase. So that means all negative energy that took away your life energy, you collect back. You're not inviting the negative energy to you. You're taking your energy back that was taken by negative energies. You draw that back. So you're not inviting negative spirits or the Lord of Death to you. You're taking your energy back from which they took. That's your visualization. And how do you visualize that? The long life energy returns to you in a form of long life vases and skull cups. Okay? So you can visualize many long life vases coming back and dissolving into the mantra. You don't have to think, oh, the vase is so big, come back and it hits you on the head and you become dizzy. You just visualize it in nature of light and it dissolves into the red khri. Okay? Once again, the essence of all the elements, the life and merit of all living beings and things excellent in the three realms, the blessings, the body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas, and the children are drawn back in the form of light rays and nectar, and all these dissolve into the mandrosi. This fills the life phase with nectar. As it overflows, the excess nectar spills over, enters the brahma aperture of the crown of my head, filling the whole body and purifying all saints, I attain state of immortality. I just read the text, and this is the visualization. So this text is telling you what you need to visualize while you're doing the mantra. So it's very simple. On top of your head, you have Amit you are Amitayas. On top of your head, you have Amitayas. And in Amitayas, he ha on Amitayas, he's holding a long life vase. In the long life vase is a red letter, Khri. From the Khri, lights go out, makes offering to all the Buddhas, which generates merits, brings back their blessings in the form of lights. And then lights go out and touches all sentient beings. And all of them are purified and become Amitayas Buddhas. So everybody is Amitayas Buddha. Remember that. Then again, the lights go out to the Lord of Death, evil spirits, and you draw back the energy they took from you. And the lights go out to also the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and deities. And it draws back 
all the energy. It says Buddhas and their children. Buddhas are Buddhas. Children are Bodhisattvas. Children are referred to as Bodhisattvas. And then all the lights of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas come back and dissolve into the Khri. And then it fills up the nectar. And the nectar overfills, overflows. It overflows onto your head. And it comes down your body, into your body. And all the obstacles, diseases, and difficulties in your body is expelled, is pushed away. You can visualize it leaving your anus into the ground, or you can simply visualize the white lights filling up your body. If you have a particular disease or problem, you visualize the lights going to that disease and purifying the disease. You do this visualization strongly and with concentration while you recite the short mantra, Om Amarani Zewon Di Soha. Om Amarani Zewon Di Soha. Om Amarani Zewon Di Soha. Okay? You can recite that mantra seven times, 21 times, one mala, up to you. Then after you finish that, if you have time, you can do the long mantra once or three times. Okay, if you don't have time, you can skip the long mantra. The long mantra is Om Namo Bhagavate Aparimita Aryujana Sumbini Tita Tezu Ranzaya Tatakataya Arhate Samya Sambudaya Teyata Om Punaye Punaye Maha Punaye Aparimiti Mita Aparimita Punaye Aparimita Punaye Jana Samba Ropa Tite Omasawa Samkara Pareshuta Dharmate Kakana Samukate Subawa Bishute Maha Naya Pareware Soha. I repeat the short mantra is Om Amarani Zewong Di Soha, and the long mantra is Om Namo Bhagavate Aparimita Ayujana Sumbini Sita. Tetsu Ranzaya Tatakataya Arhate Samya Sambudaya Teyata Ong Punaye Punaye Maha Punaye Aparimita Punaye Aparimita Punaye Jana Samba Robatite Omasawa Samkara Pare Shuda Dharmate Gagana Samgate Samukate Subawa Bishute Maha Naya Pare Ware Soha don't worry if you're not pronouncing the mantra perfectly. You do it to the best of your ability. I repeat the short mantra. You should do as much as possible every day, especially if you're very ill. The long mantra, once or twice, three times after you finish the short mantra. Okay? Then the next step is to generate more further merits for one's attainments. You do the blessings of the Torma of Amitayas. So you take your inner offering. You don't have to lift it up. I'm lifting it up for you. You use your little finger, just a little tinty bit, and you flick it. Sometimes you say, oh, but I'm so far away. If I flick it, does it actually touch the item? It doesn't matter. It's symbolic. Okay? So it doesn't have to become some kind of aiming contest. If you hit it or not, then you take a look. Did it actually touch the item? Just, Om Benza Amita Kundali Hana Hana Hom Pe. Offer the Torma. Remember the Torma we have in front of uh, Amitaya's Buddha? And then you recite Oma Subhava Shuddha Sawadama Subhava Shuddha Ham. Then you recite everything becomes emptiness. From the sphere of emptiness, from Yam comes the wind, from Ram comes fire, from Ah, a, three, a grade of three human heads. Above this, from Ah comes a broad and extensive skull cup inside of the five meats and the five nectars. These are purified, transformed, and increased by the three letters and becomes great ocean, uncontaminated nectar. Now, I'm not going to go into that visualization. As I told you, it's quite extensive and it's not necessary. Now you may be taken aback to say, oh, human heads, um, skull cup, uh, don't take it literally. The human heads are visualized. They represent the purification of body, speech, and mind. The skull cup represents impermanence. They're not actual human heads. They're not actual skull cups. They're just tantric visualizations. So don't get too concerned about that. Recite that line and then say Om Ahum, Om Ahum three times and believe that the Torma is purified. Then, you, then the next one is light rays radiate and invoke Amitayas from the pure land of bliss to the space before me. So you visualize lights from your heart 
going out and inviting Amitayas in front of you, dissolving into the statue. And then you visualize from Amitayas' tongue, there's a single spoke Vajra, which just visualize the tongue, and lights go out and draws the tormas back as you recite this mantra. Oma aparim. Aparimita ayujana sapari wara ina bhavanta kaka kai ka yi. Three times. Uma aparamite ayujana sapari wara ina bhavanta kaka kai kai kai. Uma a uma aparamite ayujana sapari wara ina bhavanta kaka kai ka hi. Don't you don't need to do the mudras as I said. Make it simple. Just recite the mantra three times and think you have offered the tormas and Amitai has, has received it and he's very happy, and you've generated the merit to increase your life and gaining medicine and nourishments and health. The next one is offering the outer offerings. Then you recite Oma Aparamite Ayujana Sapari Wara Agon Padita Soha Oma Aparimita Ayujana Sapari Wara Padin Padita Soha Oma Aparimita Ayujana Sapari Wara Pive Padita Soha Oma Aparamite Mita Ayujana Sapari Wara Dube Padita Soha Oma Aparamita Ayujana Sapari Wara Aloke Padita Soha Oma Aparimita Ayujana Sapari Wara Gende Padita Soha Oma Aparamita this is exactly like what we did earlier. Okay, so you offer that. Then the inner offering, take a little bit of the inner offering and flick it, and then do the praise. Amitayas, principal guide of the world, destroyer of all untimely death without exception. Refuge for those suffering or without a protector. To you, Buddha Amitayas, I prostrate. Okay? Then, you're done with the sadhana. It's very short and sweet. You're done with the sadhana. And here, you request Amitabha and this, all the uh, celestial beings to return to their own abode. Or you can visualize them stabilized in your statue. Then you do this mantra, Om Vajra Mu. Or this mantra, I'm sorry, Om Vajra Mu, or if you do in Tibetan style, Om Benza Mu. The mudra would be Om Benza Mu, requesting the enlightened beings to go back or stabilize in your statue. And then you recite Om Benza Mu. The guests of the Torma return to their natural abodes. And then for any mistakes that you have done or any omissions or deletions you have done by accident, you request forbearance and you think, forgive me for any mistakes. Then you recite the Vajra Satra mantra. One time, the long one. Oma Bajra Sato, Samaya, Mano Palaya, Baza Sato, Deno Bajito, Jida Mebo, Sudo Kaya Mebo, Subo Paya Mebo, Anurata Mebo, Sawa Sidi Mebo, Yate Sawa Kama Sutama Jijun Kino Hum, Ha 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 Ho, Bagoan, Benza Sato, Mamma Muza Benza Sato, Ma Samaya Sato, Ah Hong Pe. All right? Uh, it's not in the text, but you can easily find it and insert it. If you have a lot of problems reciting that long Bajra Sato mantra, I think recite the short one three times should be okay. Om Benza Satwa Hom, Om Benza Satwa Hom, Om Benza Satwa Hom. And you're done. You do the dedication verses here, it's very, very simple. And I read it for you. Through the power of the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and my single pointed accomplishments of practice and prayers, may we be cared for by our Lord and Master, and may his life be as stable and limitless as Amitayas. So you're wishing for your teacher and your guru to live long. When I see the signs of untimely death, may I immediately see clearly the body of Amitayas. And having destroyed the Lord of Death, may I quickly become the knowledge holder of life. For many hundreds of years, may I see a hundred harvests. May there be long life free from illness with bliss and happiness. May I definitely enter the Supreme Vehicle and may this auspiciousness arise. Now, Supreme Vehicle means Tantra. May my life be clear and long like the sun that never sets. And may, merit, may my merit increase like the waxing moon. May I be endowed with bravery as great as the stars in the sky, and may my practice be endowed with the glory of complete bliss and happiness. Okay? That's the dedication. And when you have finished that, you are done with the sadhana. Today I have gone through the sadhana in a short, easy form, because I have particular students in mind who would find extensive meditation, extensive explanation um, difficult for them for good reasons. So today I've done a very short explanation with offerings, reciting the sadhana together with you. Um, I think that should be quite sufficient. If you have problem doing any of the visualizations I have given, then you simply recite through the text. Believe and trust in Amitayas. 
have altruistic thinking to benefit others, and then recite the mantra. All right. Um, if you wish to do a short retreat, if you wish to do a short retreat, you can do the sadhana and recite the mantra up to 100,000 times. Um, actually, in this tantra, it will be 100,000 per syllable. So, um, ama, um, ama, ra, ni, ze, wong, di, yi, so, ha. So, actually, if you're going to do a full retreat, you have to do 1.1 million because it's 100,000 per syllable. But let's not get into all that it gets complicated. I think it's good enough to do um, whatever you can every single day as a daily practice. When you do this practice, if it's for someone else, it will send energies of healing to them. It's for yourself, it will definitely increase your life, increase your wisdom, increase your merits, and help you to overcome passions and desire that has engulfed you most of your life. Remember, when you're doing the offerings to Amitabha, when you're doing this practice, Amitabha or Amitaya Buddha, he is a fully enlightened being. He is fully enlightened. So don't only pray to him to extend your life, pray to him for everything it says in the dedication, which is to gain wisdom, compassion, altruistic mind, and in this life and all lives to be able to be born near the Buddha's teachings, near a teacher, so you can practice. This is what you do during your meditations every single day if you're doing Amitayas. When you're free and wandering around, or dry, uh, when you're free and hanging around, you can also do the mantra. Can you do the mantra without the sadhana? You can. You can. Can people without the initiation uh, do the sadhana? No. Can people without the initiation do the sadhana? No. People without this initiation just do the praise and the short mantra. Praise is Amitaya's principal guide of the world, destroyer of all untimely death without exception, refuge for those suffering and without a protector, to you, Amitai, Buddha Amitais, I prostrate. Just recite the praise, Oma Amarandi Zewondi Isoa. So for people who do not have the initiation, you may not do the sadhana, because you're meditating on yourself be, uh, being a Buddha. And without the initiation and planting the seeds and, the, and the, uh, planting the potential in you, then it is not proper to visualize yourself as a Buddha. So for those who do not have initiation, can you invoke upon the Buddha Amitabha? Sure you can. Amitayas, you just recite the praise and you recite the short mantra. Every day that's good enough. For those who have the initiation, it is your lucky day. You can do the whole sadhana, you should do the whole sadhana, and definitely it will benefit you in many, many ways. When you are done, you can clean up the offerings, you can take the torma, the cookies, biscuits, peanuts, crackers, whatever you put, you can eat it, or you can give it to the birds, uh, but don't, don't flush it down the toilet, uh, don't throw it in unclean places, okay? Uh, the water, you can put it onto plants and all that, and the, the candle, you can um, kind of put it off if you're not gonna be around. If you're around safely, you can put it there. Um, when you're traveling, do you need to have an altar? No, you don't. If you're traveling, do you need to have the sensory offerings? You don't. If you're in a hotel, it's not convenient, you don't. If you're traveling, you're in a hotel, then you don't have to have the image, you don't have to have the sensory offerings, you just do the sadhana. Let me revise. Those without initiation should not do the sadhana, just do the praise and the mantra. Those with initiation have the fortune to do the sadhana, which is what I'm holding here, and then the, um, everything else. Those without initiation can also make the offerings, it's fine, okay? So if you don't have initiation, do the praise, the mantra offering, up to you. You don't have to do the offering. For those with initiation, you do the sadhana with the offerings. When you're traveling, when you're busy, you're sick, you're not well, you're ill, or it's not convenient, do you need to be in front of your altar? Do you need to make the offerings? You don't. You do is good. You do is good. Because when you're doing the sadhana, you're offering. If there's nothing there to offer, it's kind of strange. You invite a friend over and say, oh, have some tea, have some tea. There's no tea. They're looking at you like, where's the tea? So how can you say, oh, you know, uh, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, please have the tea. They're thinking, you must be bananas. There's no tea here. Similarly, if you're doing Amitai's prayer, you're doing Om Avaramita Ayajana Sabari Wal Agum, you're saying, oh, Amitabha, have some water. There's no water. It's quite strange. So, but if you're traveling all that, you just think, never mind. Amitai's would understand today he doesn't get some water. He doesn't need the water. You need to offer the water. So therefore, when you're traveling, it's not convenient. Uh, and you can't make the offerings, is it okay to do the sadhana? Sure. Whatever it is, after initiation, whatever it is, do the sadhana, do the prayer. That's most important. Do not say, oh, I skipped the sadhana today, so I don't have to ever do it again. You skip the sadhana today, you don't have to skip it tomorrow. If you forget to eat today, which I never forget, you don't have to forget to eat tomorrow. 
If you forget to do your exercises today, you don't need to forget to do it tomorrow. So if you forget to do your mind exercise, which is Amitaya's practice today, you don't need to forget tomorrow. So don't make that as a reason to not do your practice because you skipped a day or you forgot a day, okay? Um, I think I pretty much covered everything for this short practice. I wish everybody good luck. And I wish everybody supreme attainments. And may the Buddha of infinite light from the Western paradise, Amitayas, bless all of you, give you very long life, heal diseases, prevent future diseases from coming. Gewandi nudada lama teva medjigune doa jige maluba de sala go Thank you very much and good luck.